In this video we're looking at how to fairly cheaply and fairly quickly fix a turbo. Uh, so how do you know your turbo is gone? Well one of the signs is uh, a lot of smoke coming out of the engine as uh, we can see on this picture of my recent acquisition of a Project Freelander. The problem of the smoke coming out was all due to the oil coming out of this turbo being uh, fitted or half fitted I should say, bit of a project car. Um, and once the turbo is removed then there was no more smoke coming out of the, uh, the engine when it was running and you can see why there was smoke coming out because if you look carefully in here you can see that if I move it with my finger hard to see on the video but there we go that's a bit better you see a lot of movement in the shaft of the turbo vanes very very oily a little bit of movement, quite a lot of movement there as well. Uh, so you can see how much oil has been coming out and uh, that is what's creating a lot of smoke. So this particular turbo is from a Rover and MG 1.8 turbo engine. Um, a lot easier on those to get the turbo off than on, than on a lot of cars because the turbo is on the front of the engine so it's a bit more accessible. Um, so there's four um, bolts or I should say three studs and a bolt to remove you see that one is not threaded it's threaded on the other end whereas these ones are threaded three nuts on the downpipe connection uh, a little bit of plumbing to remove and uh, that's your turbo removed uh, so why did this turbo go well one of the uh, contributing factors I think was due to the incorrect plumbing so this turbo um, has two water pipe connections, so an in and an out. Uh, this one should go to the hose at the bottom of, uh, or near the bottom of the radiator. This one goes to the top pipe connection. Uh, that ena enables a small amount of water to flow just by gravity feed. Um, when the, the engine is stopped, hot water rises and the slight flow of water through the turbo keeps it cool, stops the turbo from getting too hot and the oil carbonizing and uh, ruining the bearings of the turbo. Uh, some cars have little water pumps that run on for about five minutes after the engine stops. This one doesn't. This relies on the gravity feed of the water and it also has to have the correct angle. Something like in the book, you can look it up on the internet something between uh, I think 10 and 20 degrees or so of angle so it's positioned roughly like that and uh, so the cold water rises up through this uh, hot water pipe and keeps it cool so when you're dismantling uh, it's important to keep the orientation of the core of the turbo the same as it was previously so how do we keep the cost down and improve the uh, speed. Uh, what I've gone for as a reasonable compromise is a new turbo core, like this one here, uh, from eBay, from um, Max Speeding Rods. I haven't been paid to say this. Uh, some various stories about uh, varying quality of turbos from eBay, because um, these are made in China. Um, I guess not original Garrett ones. Uh, it seems reasonable quality, not too much play or so in the core, spins all right. Um, some people say that you can get poor quality ones, not quite so much boost as the original. Um, and there's a little bit of potluck and I think it's due to the fact that uh, the quality control is a little bit lacking compared to the original Garrett UK, I guess UK, yep UK made turbocharger which are better quality. So this one is a, a GT 2052 LS turbo, as in, uh, as I say, 1.8 Rover and MG applications, probably some others as well, perhaps. So what we're going to do is change the core, which is this bit in the uh, center section here. These outer housings, uh, the exhaust side and the inlet side, compression side, uh, don't need to change. Uh, it's just the veins, the bearing block, and the core. So it's not only quite cheap, this is about uh, £40 it cost me on eBay, but also should be quite quick. 
So what have we got to undo? Well, I've already taken off the little circlip that connects the uh, wastegate uh, control actuator. A uh, little circlip on there to remove the rod. You can see the wastegate finch just on the inside there. That is operating. There it is. Um, you'll need, as you can see here, some sets of sockets, a spanner, 10 mil for that one. Um, you'll need to disconnect these uh, water pipe connections because you can see on the new core just has threaded holes. Uh, also important to get the right gaskets. So the turbo core came with uh, a few gaskets. I uh, bought some extra ones that I thought were missing as well. Uh, just to make sure you are covered and for this bolt here that is a T30 bit, one of the star type bits okay so let's proceed with uh, dismantling it first we'll take off one of the water pipes not actually sure whether that's an 18 mil nut or an 11 16ths, unusual to have um, imperial measurements nowadays. You never know, certainly this 11 16ths seems to fit reasonably well. So that off, and then, let's see, I think that's an 18mm, yep, 18mm socket. <coughs> oh, I'm going to need to use my torque wrench on that. So useful to take uh, quite a lot of pictures as you're dismantling things, of course, just in case uh, some washers go missing or if you're confused about what washers go where. As a, for instance, the oil supply pipe, uh, which has a, uh, a banjo type connection, goes onto here with this uh, hold bolt that goes through the middle. There's two copper washers either side of it. You'll need new copper washers when you reassemble it. Oh. And on the bottom, the oil return has this metal compressible washer. Notice the kit comes with a fiber one. Hopefully that's gonna be as good. And as we're removing these bits, you see, for instance, that one's got a copper washer. You need to put a new one on. And it's probably best to install it into the same hole on the new part just to make sure you don't lose track of where everything goes so we'll do that now as well I think what we'll do is just loosely fit it and then we can get a bit more torque on it later once we've assembled it back into the housing need to try and keep it clean as well right, next remove the other side more spike connection another copper washer up here into the new servo core. We'll re then I think we'll remove the nut and bolt holding and clamping the exhaust side on with our T30 bit and a 10 mil spanner. And that's the clamp off. Right, it's quite uh, tight fit at the moment. Uh, quite difficult to try and knock this off. So I've got a big rubber uh, or a mallet with a rubber handle. I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to damage the housing. So what I'm going to do is get a blowtorch, heat up the exhaust side and uh, see if I can expand the metal to release it from the core. Here, the exhaust side gets very hot anyhow, and the core we're going to replace. And now you can see it's just starting to separate. Little gap there. There's a bit of knocking, even the quite tricky.
Ah, there we go. Uh, hopefully, we can get the new one on a bit easier. See how, see how oily it is. Now it's possible to uh, change the uh, bearings in the core of these turbos, but for 40 pounds, um, it's easier to just change the whole core. Less messing around, and it's been uh, professionally built by somebody. Uh, if it's no good, then I might keep this core and maybe redo the bearings at some point. See if that's worth doing. And next, we remove these four bolts on the compression side of the turbo that the last four hold the core in place and we can just swap over to the new one all right that's the last bolt and then this time it just lifts out fairly easily see it has a rubber o-ring seal that uh be nice to replace uh, if i haven't got it i might have to reuse it see what comes in the kit so let's compare this original, I think original Garrett uh, turbocharger core with this Chinese one. Reasonably similar. Certainly the shape of all the veins is uh, very, very similar. As maybe you can see there. That's our new core put in which is roughly that uh, orientation uh, with the oil return facing that bolt have a look at your uh, pictures if you've uh, hopefully taken some earlier or an earlier part of this video we can get the final orientation fixed once we assemble the water pipe so we won't do these all the way up and I think we we'll use a bit of Loctite thread locker 243 on these bolts as well before we do those Thread locker, Loctite 243 that you want to use, a bit of blue stuff just to stop those bolts undoing. Now one thing we've got to do before we assemble the exhaust side of the turbo is to clean out all of the oil from it because it was all contaminated. So we'll do that with a bit of petrol and a container and an old toothbrush to stop it producing loads of smoke. There we go then. Try and give that a good clip. So that's the exhaust side is all uh, cleaned up. A bit better than, than what it was. To correctly align the exhaust side of the turbo with the core you see there's this little uh, rolled pin here which has to be removed from the hole on the old one just tap it out with a hammer push it out with a suitably uh, size little precision screwdriver or whatever you've got collect it push it in there it's tighter fit here than it is on the exhaust side and although i thought i'd have to heat up the exhaust side again to get it to fit once I'd cleaned the carbon out of uh, this groove here, which I did just by rubbing it down with a piece of old sandpaper. Don't want to wear away the metal, but just enough to scrape off and rub off the carbon that's accumulated. Then I found that it actually fitted okay without having to heat it. Like so. Let's put the clamp back on. So the core is aligned to the exhaust side via that rolled pin that was in the assembly and you can get a rough alignment between the inlet side and the exhaust side by lining up where the actuator goes which is about there and now we've got it all assembled we can tighten up those water pipes with the copper washers because now we've got a little bit more leverage doesn't actually need any uh, thread sealant on these because it's the copper washer that does the sealing. Once you've got the water pipe connected you can test the alignment of the compression side to the rest of the turbo 
and if necessary just slacken the bolts like I've done already and you can give it a little bit of a twist like so to make sure that lines up correctly and then retighten the bolts and refit the actuator onto the wastegate but circle it back on and that is how to rebuild your turbo and then we've just got to get it back in the car just one little final check make sure that the turbo vanes turn smoothly no scratchy noises or anything which it seems to so that's fine that's how to rebuild your turbo uh, for in this case about 40 pounds plus the price of a few gaskets which is only a few quid and just in case you're wondering whether that turbo now works or not there's a turbo reinstalled in this Freelander and around the back we can see that there's no longer smoke coming out of the exhaust so that's the turbo fix thanks for watching bye